this is um uh something that uh uh a project i was involved in with uh with chandra and and also uh Manuel Torres on, on the densest subgraph problem. It's, it's the part of the project I thought told a nice story. Um, here are pictures of Chandra and Manuel at roughly the, the same age, I think. Um, okay, so um, uh, densest sub subgraph, I'm sure everyone here is at least somewhat familiar with it, but uh, you know, the density of a graph of course is, is uh, the number of edges divided by uh, the number of vertices. Here's for the most part, uh, a pretty sparse graph. Uh, and a densest subgraph is to is to find a subgraph that's most dense. So of course, uh, here's a relatively dense patch uh, of the graph. It's a click on five vertices. So our goal is to identify uh, you know the subset of vertices S that that induces the the densest subgraph. Okay. All right. So um, of course you can uh, extend it to things like like weighted edges and hypergraphs and, and all that. Um, and besides being a, a very natural problem, this of course uh, uh, is also a very uh, popular problem for many applications. Um, of course, I'm not the, the world's biggest application expert, but I, I stole some slides uh, from, from Babes Surakakis, who does a lot of work uh, uh, in this area just, just for fun. So uh, some of the examples uh, he gives are just, uh, I guess, lots of interesting situations in data mining where you kind of want to extract something like a click. I guess. Uh, on the left-hand side, if you're uh, if you're in security and you're keeping track of people's phone calls, if you have a lot of people talk to each other, that's some kind of anomaly that raises some flags. Um, I, I guess uh, uh, when people are processing tweets and stuff, uh, they find subjects uh, that occur frequently with each other, and they draw edges there, and they can extract some some info. Uh, another example that he gives of you know where does a graph come up where uh, you want to do some kind of uh, dense subgraph uh, uh, is when you look at correlations uh, in some data sets. So, so uh, the vertices correspond to, I guess, these these events, and then you have edges that that reflects the the strength of of correlation uh, between events. Uh, so he gives some nice pictures of examples from uh, uh, bioinformatics. Okay. All right. So much for a. Uh, for, for applications, um, you know, I think uh, that uh, a basic uh, appeal of this problem uh, compared to actually like finding a, a large click is um, is that it's, it's polynomial time solvable, as I'm sure everyone uh, here is aware. Um, <clears throat> here's maybe a quick proof by uh, by supermodularity. Uh, let's consider the, the division uh, that decision version of the problem. You're given some value lambda, you want to find a set with density, uh, at least lambda. Uh, so uh, to do that, we might want to maximize uh, you know, the number of edges uh, minus lambda side of S and see if we can get this thing to be at least zero. Uh, and then after that, uh, you know, uh, given a set of vertices, if you count up the, the number of edges inside, that's a, that's a super modular function. I also subtract out the number of vertices everything remains super modular. And, uh, and of course we can, we can maximize uh, a super modular function in, in polynomial time. Okay. All right. Um, you know, maybe more, as far as more concrete algorithms go than, than relying on, on, a, on this black box, you know, Goldberg uh, uh, gave a reduction from the, the decision version uh, to flow. Here are some, uh, uh, figures from, from his original technical report. Um, maybe one thing, the only thing really I should point out is that the, the number of edges and vertices in this auxiliary graph is, doesn't really change very much, still roughly the input graph. Um, now, uh, there's a second uh, algorithm that's, that's really popular in practice um, called, called greedy peeling. So it was introduced uh, by Asahiro et al. Uh, 96, and it was analyzed by, uh, by Moses Charikar. And so uh, it's a very uh, a nice idea. The idea is that uh, we're gonna sort of peel vertices out of the graph. And I'll go through an example in a moment. Uh, the first vertex is the minimum degree vertex in the graph. We remove it. And then we look at the remaining graph uh, and we find the next smallest 
uh, degree vertex, remove it from the graph and, and keep going until there's nothing left in the graph. And uh, so that produces some ordering of all the vertices. And I, I kind of look at like, uh, what is the densest of all those remaining graphs uh, that arise? So, uh, you know, in, in our, in our uh, sort of contrived example here, we would start, you know, removing these, these small uh, degree vertices, like maybe I'd remove that one. And then this, now we have a degree one thing uh, and, and so forth. And, and gradually, uh, you know, the, the graph gets smaller and smaller as we remove vertices. And uh, uh, you can also kind of see that we're, uh, we're preserving, well, in this case, a very simple uh, dense subgraph uh, is left at the end. Okay, so uh, uh, a, a very nice uh, uh, heuristic. So, so, so Moses proved that this will give you a two approximation uh, for the dense subgraph problem, and and this heuristic is is uh, just really really popular uh, in practice. Um, of course, you can implement it very fast and you can implement it uh, to be very fast and you can implement it very easily and so forth. Okay. So, um, all right. So that, that gives a few algorithms for uh, a dental subgraph. There's, uh, there's a continuing versioning literature uh, on many more uh, algorithms for dental subgraph and various extensions of dental subgraph, you know, hypergraphs, weights, all these things. Um, and uh, we were interested, uh, uh, John Armando and I, we got interested in this, um, uh, a recent uh, algorithm uh, that takes uh, this peeling idea uh, that I just described and puts it in an iterative framework uh, in an algorithm they call it greedy plus plus. Okay, so let me, let me explain. So this is, uh, this is an algorithm proposed by uh, Bu Gao Peng, Salani, Tsurakakis, Wang, and Wang. Uh, and, and so the idea is to try to take that original peeling heuristic, which already performs uh, uh, pretty well in practice and, and try to improve it uh, in, in, in some iterative framework, okay? And, and so to, to kind of make the, 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 add some memory to the process, uh, uh, introduce uh, uh, vertex loads, uh, which I'll explain. So initially um, every vertex has, uh, has load zero. And the first iteration is the exact same as the regular peeling process. We repeatedly peel off the, the minimum degree vertex. And then whatever that degree is of the vertex when it gets peeled off, we, we write that down in, in, in the load. It's sort of this peeled off degree, uh, we write that down, okay? And then we're gonna build on this in, in all the subsequent iterations. So uh, take the second iteration, um, rather than just peeling off the vertex's minimum degree, we're gonna peel off the vertex that kind of minimizes the degree plus the load or sort of what will the load will become. So um, uh, this is sort of anticipating uh, the future load. And so, uh, uh, yeah, so in this sense, we, uh, we, we peel, but we're kind of keeping track of what we've peeled before and, and how we've, uh, the, those degrees that we've incurred. And at the end of each iteration, uh, we will increase the load uh, by that peeled degree in, in, in that iteration. Okay, so we, we do this repeatedly and, and each time the, the peeling process might change uh, a little bit. So okay. Ken, just, just yeah. to understand, you, you run a full uh, iteration of this where you peel everybody off and then yeah. the degree gets increased or the load gets increased by what the degree was when you peeled it off? Yes. Uh, exactly. Okay. Thanks. Better put than I did. Okay. Good. Thank yeah, you. So, so I think you, Kent, you may not have explained uh, the the what exactly you output from the peeling in the sense. Ah, that... that's that's coming up. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So, um, okay. So so um, uh, so we're running peeling over and over again. Uh, using uh, also keeping track of some sums along the way. And, and so that produces uh, a different ordering or possibly same, but it produces an ordering of vertices with, with every iteration. And uh, 
out of all those orderings uh, produced over all the iterations, we can look at all the kind of suffixes or those remaining subgraphs that ever arise. Okay, so we ultimately return the, the densest uh, suffix of the ordering, you know, as it does the densest subgraph um, over all the orderings iterations uh, in this process. Okay. So each, each uh, iteration generates kind of a different uh, appealing order that, that gives some candidates for the densest subgraph. Okay, so it's got kind of a nice natural uh, algorithm. Um, and, and in their paper, they show a lot of um, uh, good empirical results that sort of just kind of copied uh, uh, and, and pasted some stuff, uh, you, know, um, you know, among other things, uh, 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 you know, in situations where I guess the original peeling algorithm didn't get the exact algorithm, uh, but was very close uh, in only a couple more iterations is often able to identify the exact densest subgraph. They can of course run an exact algorithm to verify this. Um, uh, uh, and, um, and, and maybe uh, importantly, they had, a, they had a conjecture. So um, uh, they weren't able to um, prove it, but they, they conjectured that uh, uh, in roughly one over square root T uh, iterations. Uh, so T denotes number of iterations, or sorry, in, in T iterations, you get like a one over square root T or so uh, approximation. So what I mean is a, is something with density at least, you know, one minus uh, one over square root T of uh, uh, opt or so. Okay, so that's, that's uh, this question that, that, that we got interested in. Um, and, and, and so to kind of motivate their approach and, and, and uh, get into the weeds a little, um, helps to look at some LPs, okay? So here's- um, uh, Kent, uh, I, I might be going back again, but the algorithm again is to peel the one with the least degree and then add something to the load or- Yeah, so the load is keeping track of the load is keeping track of oh, the degrees, degrees of these vertices as they add up. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, all right, so, so let's just start talking about um, uh, some LPs. And so here's maybe a, a natural uh, LP directly relaxing the, the densest subgraph problem. So we have, uh, uh, variables for, for both vertices and edges. Um, and uh, uh, the, the vertex weights are constrained uh, to be at most one. And the edges are, are, are bounded above by, by the endpoint. So if I have an edge E between uh, U and V, uh, the weight of the edge has to be at most uh, the weight assigned to the vertex. So I wanna maximize uh, ultimately the, the sum of edges. So the relaxation is just, um, uh, you know, given a, a set S. If I want to turn into a feasible thing, uh, and I and I let uh, K be the number of vertices in S, uh, I'll assign one over K to all the vertices, and then one over K to to all the edges inside S. Okay. If I take the dual uh, of this LP, um, uh, then we get the the following. Um, uh, now we, we really, the main variables are, 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 are uh, uh, indexed by uh, an edge and an endpoint of the edge. And uh, for every edge, I have to make sure that sort of the, the, two, the two corresponding values are at least one. Um, and then I have another parameter D, which is really tracking the maximum sum. Sorry, this should be a, a V over um, all of the vertices. So sort of, uh, I'm trying to, to allocate the uh, edges to their endpoints and minimize the, uh, uh, the maximum load. Okay, I think that's what we do here, right? We're always gonna set D to be wherever that maximum load is. Uh, so this LP is, is trying to kind of take each edge and assign it to one of the two endpoints uh, to maximize the, to minimize the maximum load on any, any vertex. Okay. All right, so this also um, 
motivates peeling and also motivates uh, uh, iterative peeling um, uh, uh, in terms of trying to keep that maximum load small. The dual is to orient the edges so that you minimize the max degree in degree. Uh, yeah, maybe that's a better way to put it. Yes, uh, you can think of it as orienting the edges to minimize the maximum in degree. Okay. Uh, but uh, okay, so that that motivates feeling, but doesn't fully explain it. So let me let me retreat back. Um, to the original kind of uh, primal relaxation, and we're going to go in a, a slightly different direction. Okay, so so again here, uh, this is the one with the uh, the vertex and edge weights. I'm trying to kind of take a lot of large set of vertices. So if I set the y's, it's big. Okay, so of course we're going to set um, y e to be the minimum of the two endpoints. We might as well make it as big as possible. Uh, so if we inline this choice, um, then uh, we're uh, we're left with uh, uh, maximizing sort of the min of the two endpoints, uh, overall um, vertex weights that, that sum up to one. Okay, fine. And, and now the question is, okay, how do we uh, interpret this, this sum? So um, consider the, the, the following uh, a random experiment. So uh, let's let S uh, be a random set. So I'm gonna draw uh, a value of theta and zero one uniformly at random. And I'm gonna take all the vertices with weight at least theta, uh, given a fixed X. Okay. Then, then of course, the, the probability that uh, both of the endpoints uh, are gonna be in S or that kind of edge is in S is the minimum of the, the two values. Uh, okay. And um, yeah, I should have mentioned things uh, that that first LP was given by Moses. Um, okay, so the, the, the min xu of xu and xv can be seen as the probability of, uh, of preserving this edge. Uh, so the sum of mins is really the expected uh, number of edges in the set uh, in the subgraph induced by s. Okay. All right, so that's, uh, that, that brings us to um, uh, the Lavat's extension. Um, which uh, I, mean, I think kind of establishing this connection was, was a big step for us. So um, the law of odds extension, I want to take my, my set function S and extend it to, uh, uh, okay, this is zero one to the, the V, sorry. Um, and uh, I guess for sake of conversation and in the interest of time, a good operating definition then is that uh, given some, some values X, um, for, for a supermodular F in particular, uh, it'll be the expected value of F of S for per precisely that set S uh, just described. Okay. So uh, in that sense, we can uh, we can take that that LP and uh, at least express it a little more elegantly in terms of the Lovatz extension. I'm trying to maximize the Lovatz extension of X overall. Uh, uh, kind of distribution of vertices. Some of X's have to be uh, most one. Okay. okay, good. So we're making making at least some connections here. So what comes next? Okay, so the next part um, is uh, we'll invoke uh, just some kind of textbook classical optimization part uh, aspects. So um, uh, so I need to introduce. Uh, you know, the, the contra polymetric, the base contra polymetric of a supermodular function. So these are non-negative vectors. So that if I think about it as a, as a set function, kind of the weight of a set, it's dominating F uh, while keeping the whole sum uh, the same, okay? And for our particular example of uh, the number of edges induced by a set of vertices, um, that's trying to assign uh, uh, vertex weights uh, so that the, the weight of any set is at least the number of edges in that, in that subgraph, well, total weight is M. Okay. The other thing, uh, uh, notation I need to introduce uh, before we get into the ideas is, um, is, a, is a mapping between orderings of the vertices and, and vectors, and it's really the, the, the peeled off degree. Um, so, so given an ordering, uh, sigma, 
uh, I'm going to define uh, Q of the ordering to be the, the marginal value gained from adding V to the, the set of vertices that are ordered after V. So in a particular case of our, our dense subgraph problem, given some ordering uh, V1 through Vn, this is really um, the, the remaining degree of Vi based on the, the vertices that are left. This okay, so is the same as sort of that degree when things get peeled off if, if we interpret sigma as some ordering for the peeling process. Okay, so, um, uh, so we need a, a few facts then uh, that are well known. One is that these, these, uh, these vectors induced by uh, orderings will give you vertices at a base contra polynatroid. Uh, the second is that uh, the Lavat's uh, extension uh, can be interpreted as minimizing over the base contra polymetroid. Uh, and the other is that if you are trying to minimize over the, the base contra polymetroid, you should take the, the ordering that's increasing in, in coordinates. So when we put these uh, uh, three known facts together, um, we get uh, 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 the following uh, uh, useful version that the Lavat's extension is, is minimizing over or, all orderings uh, x times this, this vector q induced by the orderings induced to some extent by peeling. Okay. okay. So uh, that, all, all, what that lets us do then is, is as follows. Um, I want to maximize uh, the Lavat's extension. Um, and I'm going to let lambda star uh, denote the optimum density from now on. And of course, I can, I can kind of flip it and make this uh, minimizing the sum of xds subject to try to make sure that Lavat's extension is at least the optimum density. Let's say we've guessed it for the time being. Um, and, and taking some of these kind of known facts, um, it lets us then say that, uh, let's just kind of take uh, in particular this, this funny thing and expand it out to a bunch of uh, linear constraints. So I want to make sure that for any ordering, uh, x times that vector induced by the ordering uh, is at least lambda star. Okay, so now I, I've kind of turned this into a pure covering problem where we're covering orderings. Uh, we take the dual, we get a pure packing problem. Uh, and we're now trying to kind of pack orderings um, into, into the vertices. So, so we have these coefficients y sub, sub sigma and uh, these values, these kind of peeled degrees, so to speak, need to be at most one for every vertex. Okay. All right. Okay, so then um, our, our claim then is, is to try to argue that, that this, this greedy plus plus algorithm is actually solving this last LP. Uh, okay. so, so, so to make um, this argument, uh, the, the high level idea was, uh, was to try to show that uh, this greedy plus plus uh, algorithm is, uh, can be understood as a, as a special case of the, the multiplicative weight update framework for precisely this um, pure packing problem of packing. Okay, so um, we only have a few minutes left, so I'll be brief. So just to give a high level idea then, uh, if we wanted to kind of sketch out multiplicative weights uh, for this problem, we start with uh, um, an empty solution, y is zero, and, and it's based on uh, setting up some weights and then solving a relaxing Lagrangian relaxation. So the weights of each vertex is gonna kind of reflect how much of the packing constraints we've used. And uh, each iteration, we solve uh, that Lagrangian relaxation where we've uh, collapsed all those packing constraints into one using the weights. Okay. Now, as far as this um, relaxation goes, since it's sort of like a one dimensional packing problem, I really just want to find um, the object with the, the minimum cost. So uh, I want to find the ordering of kind of that induces the minimum kind of cost. And if we bring in uh, and that, that last fact, uh, in fact, this ordering is very easy to find. It's given by the ordering that's increasing in, in weight. Okay. But it's important to point out that, that in the framework, it, it's okay to also approximate this problem too. If I got something that's 10% more expensive, uh, I'll lose 10% the overall error, life goes on. Okay. 
only a couple minutes. So that's what the algorithm does is um, in general, we, we repeatedly, you know, roughly look for an ordering that's increasing in weight and then we'll, we'll increase uh, that coordinate okay, and, and gradually build up a, a combination of, of orderings. Okay. One thing to point out is that the, the step size, this is sort of the width dependent step size, is going to be inversely proportional to the maximum degree in the graph, because that's sort of how much a packing constraint can go up. Okay. So then our subclaim is really trying to say that the greedy peeling process and greedy plus plus is producing orderings that approximately solve the relaxation in every iteration. I think I can give a brief interview overview in like one or two minutes. Okay. So let me, let me try to at least just give the high level idea. So greedy plus plus is, is selecting um, these orderings so that uh, we're peeling off sort of the, the load up to that point plus the, the degree in the remaining graph. Okay. And sort of the idealized at least multiplicative weight out. The algorithm is always trying to choose something that's increasing in the weight. Now, if you look at the, that sum in the exponential, right, based on our, our history of ordering selected so far, um, and remembering that these Qs are really the, the peeled degrees. Uh, that's really um, exponential in the load of each vertex up to that point from the previous iterations, okay? So, so the greedy plus plus is sort of trying to do things based on the, the load and, and, and the degree in the middle of this peeling process. And the, the multiplicative weights would just uh, do the load uh, kind of statically at the, the beginning of the iteration. All right, so just to then give some high level idea of, of the remaining parts of the proof, suppose that um, in some fixed iteration and starts peeling, uh, the first vertex differs, yes. Okay, so greedy plus plus selects U and MWU selects B. Okay, just based on how these two algorithms select their, their vertices, I know that the, the load of V is at most the load of U and I also know that the load of U plus the degree of U is that most the load of V plus the degree of V, this is the remaining degree in the graph. So in particular, there's some relation whenever things get flipped uh, between the two loads. Okay. And the weights were, were exponential in the loads divided by the maximum uh, degree. So we can see that for these two vertices, the weights must have been fairly similar. So you can do a similar argument for the other inversions. As similar, whenever two vertices are flipped in the ordering, they must have similar weights. And you do a few more calculations and then you can show that peeling is actually getting a one plus epsilon approximation for relaxation. So that's, that's, it. that's basically it. We're saying that greedy plus plus is following MW with a fixed step size. And, and as consequently, it'll give you a, a one plus epsilon approximate densest subgraph and delta over lambda star or so um, iterations. I didn't explain how to actually extract the density subgraph, but that's by some standard discussion. And uh, uh, of course, our discussion was only really using supermodularity, so you can do some extensions of this. Uh, one one question that um, you know kind of continues to stifle us is this remaining uh, maximum degree divided by optimum density term. This is typically small in real data, so that's maybe okay, but we don't really know kind of theoretically if it's necessary, we don't have a counter example or, or a better sharper proof or something. So, all right, sorry for going over and thank you very much.